Hi, I'm uh, Chris Bottrell from Chris Bottrell Photography. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, the new uh, Magic Lantern firmware update for the 5D Mark III. There's been an awful lot of hype on the internet um, about this new firmware unlock if you haven't heard about it, which I'm sure you have heard of it. Basically, you uh, can unlock your Canon cameras, they've done it on the 7D, the 5D Mark II, the 60D and the 5D Mark III. You can unlock it so it actually records in uh, raw video. Now, one thing that's kind of a bit pissing me off at the moment uh, that I'm hearing on the internet is that a lot of people are saying, why do you need to use raw? And, well, in my opinion, it's, it's quite simple, really. As a, a professional photographer like I am, would you ever go and do a job and shoot in JPEG? Well, the answer is no. 99% um, of the time, it will be no. I've never taken a single JPEG shot on any of my camera bodies uh, on a professional job, and nor would I. So if you, you know, want to do video, why not use RAW? I mean, yeah, there are downsides to it, um, like storage space. Um, so, you know, unless you own shares in SanDisk, then I'm sure you know it's going to cost you quite a lot of money to, to, to buy all the memory cards and storage that go with it. And something else that I'm hearing quite a lot of as well is people complaining about the raw, the raw workflow. And it's actually not all that difficult, and I think that the, the final outcome that you actually get with the raw um, outcome is it's far more superior than the the H.264 codec that the the Canon cameras have uh, baked into them. So I went outside uh, on this very rainy day in Norwich and just shot a couple of seconds of footage um, in the garden. It's it's nothing special. It's just basically to to demonstrate. Um, how easy the workflow is. So we're going to move over to the PC and I'm going to show what you can do. Right, as you can see on my desktop I have a folder called Canon. Let's move over to the screen so you can see it. Uh, if you download raw to dng.exe which is for Windows um, you, that's needed to convert your raw files into uh, DNG frames. Um, there's lots of tutorials on how to do this, uh, people opening up the, the command line prompt which is, um, in my opinion, a little bit useless really because it's quite as simple as dragging from there to there and it does it for you. So I've got 321 frames in this sequence that I've just done out in the garden. Now what I need to do is obviously convert them into video. So I'm not going to bother using um, video editing software or in fact I'm actually going to use Lightroom because at the end of the day Lightroom is actually designed for this specific purpose. Yeah, it's not designed for video but it's designed for raw footage. So in here I have got um, my raw test folder where you can see I've uh, this is all raw video that I've done um, in the past for my lovely wife. And what I'll simply do is I'll just import the DNG frames into Lightroom. Which I shall do, right. Now where did I put them? Oh yeah, they're on the desktop. So I'll select my Canon folder, and this is basically what all the frames look like. They they do come in at this this horrible sort of colour to begin with, but once they're actually imported, you'll see what you can do with them. Now you've got so much more um, colour grading options in Lightroom than you have um, with any other program, and I've got hundreds and hundreds of presets that I use for my uh, photography which you can use in video. The only thing that you've got to be um, slightly careful of is the sharpening because you cannot sharpen these frames as much as you would a still photo because to be honest it, it looks a bit shit once you actually get it into um, After Effects and start messing around with it. So they're all imported 
which didn't take long at all. Um, obviously, I, Lightroom's got to build the the one to one previews. Um, it doesn't have to. You can start work on them whenever you want, but. Um, we'll just start on the first frame and I'll show you my workflow. So at the moment we have this DNG still. If you go into the develop module, um, the white balance is 9 times out of 10 always off on this. Um, with a, a funny tint on it, so I'm just going to correct it for daylight. And take that horrible tint off it. now. Because you have got a, a DNG raw file here, as you know you've got so much more dynamic range, you can go the exposure down to literally black, to literally white out. Um, so, you know, the what you can do with, with these images is, is literally endless. Um, clarity is another thing that I wouldn't put up too much on my, on my DNG files, um, simply because it, it just doesn't look right. Um, I've got my presets here that I've got, you know, just a single click. And you know you you've got your own um, your own picture styles. Um, again, on this one here, important is to turn the sharpening way down because it it does look a little bit crap. But what I'm going to do is rather than using that example, I'll use the um, the stills that I that I did of my wife because uh, it's probably a little bit nicer to look at rather than a a stupid empty garden. Let's go back to my raw test file folder. These are, I've, I've graded all these anyway. Um, I used a, a picture style that I quite like in them, a, sort of like a, a washed out look. Um, as you can see, so if you just grab your frame, so I'll grab the very first one and go down to the end of the sequence. I'm using a fairly fast machine here, 32 gig of RAM and a, an i7 processor, and it, it does slow it down a little bit, but it's nothing, nothing too bad. It's not going to break your balls or anything. It's going a bit slow at the moment because I'm rendering previews and also screen recording. So, so go to my last frame, and what I'll do is I will export all them. Let's choose my folder and I'll just go straight to my uh, desktop Canon and I'll stick them in my TIFF folder. And what I will do is I will export these as TIFFs. Um, if you go in into um, After Effects you can use 16-bit. If you go into Premiere it doesn't allow it so um, it will set the resolutions to 240. Um, sRGB as well, don't use any of the others because the colours won't come out quite as you see them. And I obviously don't want to watermark it, so I'm going to export them. Not sure how long that will take, if it does take a while I'll come back. Right, so uh, the uh, Lightroom has now finished exporting all of my files as TIFFs. Um, I've just opened up After Effects CC here. So if you go to Composition, New Composition, um, and I can't actually remember what size these were. Let's have a quick look. These TIFFs are 960 by 540. So let's choose 960. 540. Uh, that's 25 frames a second because I'm in PAL land here. Okay, so if you just go to File, Import, and choose File, and choose your very first TIFF, choose TIFF Sequence, and go to Import. Drag them down onto your timeline, and there you have some lovely, lovely raw footage of my wife smoking. She doesn't usually smoke but she it was a Friday and she likes a glass of wine and whenever she has a glass of wine she likes a cigarette. So um, so there's your footage and you know when it comes to exporting uh, your footage if you you can see how quickly it will do it if you go just add it to render queue 
I'm just going to put it down to 264 at 50 megabits a second, so that's fine. And we'll call this Comp2 and hit render. As you can see, it renders it practically in real time. Um, I'm not sure if it's because my computer's fairly fast, but it's it's certainly not slow. Um, so you know when people say, "Oh, you know the raw workflow is is really long and tedious." Yeah, it does take up a lot of hard drive space. But as I say, if you're a professional and you want the best results, you're going to shoot in raw, and you're not going to shoot in the the H.264 um, codec that's baked into the camera because it's they just cannot be compared in quality. And there we go. That's exported already. Um, I won't save that and I'll just open up the what I've just exported. As you can see there is great detail on there and it's just a, a very very versatile format to use. It looks like it's jittering slightly at the moment it's only because I've got too much stuff going on on the PC. So there you go. So really, to 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 sum up um, what I'm trying to say is, basically, you know, these cameras can do phenomenal pictures with RAW. Um, as I said, a lot of people have been have been saying, you know, why shoot in RAW? Um, you don't need to shoot in RAW. But again, as I say, if you're a professional, would you ever go and shoot a wedding or do portraits in JPEGs? No, you won't. Um, I, I think there's a, a lot of camera snobbery going on on the internet. Um, I know, you know, people like Philip Bloom use the Canon C300 and absolutely swear by it. And I think that a lot of people are quite miffed, really, and a bit pissed off that they've gone out and spent you know, 15, 20 grand on a on a camera where you can just go and pick up a 5D Mark III, put the Magic Lantern um, raw hack on it and you've got a, a better quality camera. So my advice to people is if you're a professional and you want the best picture quality out there, shoot in raw. End of. Thanks for watching.